To rip out the nettles from your garden is to erase a little part of your history. It is the plants we foolishly call weeds that tell us about the soil we stand on. These are the native plants that tell us about our history, about the way people before us engaged with the soil and used those very plants for their medicine, for their food, uh, for their clothing, for their craft. And through that, they were directly engaging with the land. Why not let your nettles grow? Why not let them stand where they are at the back of your garden tall? Red Admiral, small tortoise shell, the peacock caterpillar, snout, burnished brass, angle shades, all of these are the moths and butterflies that need the nettles. We're left with ghosts, barely swaying in the wind, hanging in there. Ghosts of ecosystems, ghosts of tangled webs of animals and plants and humans coming to mingle. And instead we are left with the flatness of lawns. We are in the kitchen of Alex Hackett, who is an anthropogastronomer. astronomer. She's going to give us a recipe for nettle seed oat cake. These are some seeds I gathered uh, back in August and September. And I picked those from the female nettles. Um, you can see them, distinguish them in the way that the filaments kind of droop with seeds rather than flick upwards like the male ones. Uh, we got half of them to make quite the oat flour. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll leave the rest half. How, how much uh, oats do you need in total? So it's 150, 150 grams. And then adds the 42 grams of vegetable oil. Um, so yeah, like, uh, it's not maybe quite salty. Yeah. Salty's good. Yeah. Um, just a little bit sweet as well. And then I just add pretty much hundred grams. Stimulant basically, so you don't want to go overboard. 
um, but this much shouldn't really have any effect, I don't think. But, well, not a noticeable effect. Um, so then that's pretty sticky, so we kind of leave that for like 15 minutes just for that hot water to kind of mm. pull all the oats mm. to the, uh, like meld together mm -hmm. in the hot water. Still a bit warm, which kind of helps. Um, but it's not hot. Uh, and then, yeah, just roll it out like you'd roll out um, well, pastry or biscuit dough. Uh, and make sure it doesn't stick. And then, really, you just you just roll it out as thin as you want your oat cakes to be because um, they don't really they maybe rise a tiny bit but they don't really rise so you just um, just roll it out as thin as you want them really and I think thinner is better because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they're a bit more crisp The oat cakes are to go in a preheated oven uh, at 180 degrees for 20 minutes. As we saw in the recipe earlier, in order to make a fertilizer, all you have to do is pick some nettles, put them in a bucket, fill it with water, weigh it down with a brick or a stone, and wait for a couple of weeks. After those two weeks, you'll, you'll know it's ready by its smell. It is one of the most distinctive gardening smells I know. Once you've strained off the liquid, the nettles can be placed directly into your compost. Nettles are an activator. They will help decompose your compost at a quicker rate. Nettles are the breeding ground for so many insects. The ladybird lays her eggs right onto the leaves because she knows that aphids are attracted to nettles. As these nettles attract the insects to your garden, birds start coming also. The birds come and perch onto the nettles and peck at the seeds. It also attracts mammals, such as bats and mice, hedgehogs, all coming for a dinner. This is from the editorial in the garden scene. I tend to lean towards the less tidy gardens, the one that have unruly margins that invite insects into their folds and the birds that follow. 
I tend to find value in resourceful gardening practices. Those that acknowledge what is already there and work alongside it, celebrate it. Those that playfully incorporate domestic objects into their gardening apparatus. Gardens are the perfect microcosm in which we might devise new, fruitful ways to interact with our environment. Nettles were often used in the place of linen for their tough fibers. The fibers are on the outside of the plant. They encapsulate the pith. I'm using a brass doorknob to flatten my nettle stalks. This flattening process enables me to break the stem in half and liberate the fibers from the core. Nettle fibers are so strong. When woven together, they make excellent garden twine. Nettles were used for crafting. Um, their fibers uh, were considered of great value because of it, uh, the, the strength of the nettles. Uh, of course, they were uh, harder to extract than, uh, for example, linen, and therefore, you know, that's why we don't have nettle fabric uh, readily available. Um, but it does, you can make fabric from nettle fibers. Um, you can make cordage, which is what I'm doing here, and uh, which can be used as garden twine. And you can also um, dye cloth, uh, which I regularly do. As soon as uh, spring comes and I've got young nettles, I'll use them to make a sort of uh, deep green. And then for the second cut later on during the summer, as it grows back, I'll use those tender leaves as well and I'll get kind of a more of a, a greyish brown, a lot of different greys, sometimes even a tinge of um, uh, faint purple, but mainly with, with a kind of a green undertone. It's quite interesting to think about how craft, um, you know, gives us a kind of a connection with, uh, with a being, with a non-human non being, such as the nettle. Um, I mean, to engage with craft is, is, is to, you know, acknowledge a tradition. Um, you're, you're acknowledging years and years of, um, of knowledge that has evolved uh, from people uh, engaging and encountering uh, this plant. And, and creating practices, creating objects, crafting, that's what craft is. And I think as a woman, as a female artist, um, 
I have struggled a lot with kind of coming to terms with crafting because um, because of the kind of easy association between women and craft that we have kind of inherited um, as female artists, you know, that craft was um, something women kind of did in the domestic sphere. Um, so, you know, weaving and uh, embroidery, um, dyeing cloth. Um, but, but I've kind of over, you know, I've come to reclaim that um, in my artistic practice because I, I recognize you're almost in communion with something. You're, you're, when you engage with the nettle, you are speaking to your ancestors. And, and not just that, you're continuing this knowledge, you're passing it on. And um, by choosing to engage with the nettle and to use it in craft, you're, you're, you're also rekindling interest. Um, you know, if I need the nettle for my, for dyeing my cloth, if I need the nettle um, for making my twine or my fabric or my paper, then I'm more inclined to grow it in my garden and ecosystems are going to come back and, uh, and regenerate. Biodiversity is going to um, shoot up. I strongly think that craft might be an answer to uh, combating climate change and, and standing up to um, environmental devastation and loss. The technique for making nettle cordage is so repetitive that I sometimes wonder if perhaps people making the cordage would have had a song to go with it much like the Scottish walking songs, uh, these repetitive songs, these rhythmical songs that were created and sung together um, when beating the tweeds in order to make it uh, more waterproof and supple. Um, it consisted of beating it against the table, uh, a wash in urine. And with the cordage, it's a matter of twisting the strands in the same um, direction over and over again you do the first uh, first half and the second you twist twist and then you twist the two strands together and they should uh, uh, curl around each other um, much like DNA A friend has sent me this uh, because she knew I was making a film about nettles and this is quite exciting. It is nettle tincture, so, net so we've got some alcohol in there and some nettle seeds and it's supposed to give you energy, just a few drops a day. And so I am going to test this. Just another example of something you can make with nettles. I hope that you will consider letting these wonderful, wonderful beings exist in your garden um, now that you're aware what fascinating plants they are with a, an incredible history and perhaps an intertwined future with ours.